Hello friends, if you follow me often, you know that I am planning a trip to Yellowstone National Park during the fairly hostile winter season. And in fact, in Member Monday this week, I go through some updates on the planning for the trip. So members, make sure you go check that out. If you're a member, you know where to find it. The community tab, or there's a link below. If you don't have any idea what I'm talking about, check out the join button below, or there's a link in the description below for that as well. But anyway, I'm planning this trip and it is going to be cold. And I am planning for that. All of the, all the things that you have to think about when you're going to be using your camera in the cold and just being in the cold in general. So I actually asked on social media what your tips were for shooting in the cold. And I got a lot of great tips back. So I wanted to kind of go through just some of them. There were way too many to go through all of them in this video, but I did want to go through some of them. And then also some of my own tips for you all that might be wanting to head out into the cold winter to use your camera gear. So let's see. Number one, lots of folks talked about clothes layering, you know, not wearing cotton, but Mark said something really poignant. He said, pay attention to your body. If your body is giving you signals that something is wrong, don't ignore it. That is so true. I mean, that's true anytime you're outside, but in the cold, that's really, really important because it is really tough to get back warmed up. So really, you know, listening to your body is you know, the way to go. So, so you don't die or lose your fingers. So <laughs> moving along, speaking of losing your fingers, Greg says to watch out for Bigfoot. And as I'm reading that, I'm thinking when it's snowy outside, aren't they called Yeti? Anyway, I don't know. Somebody tell me down in the comments, are you a Bigfoot expert or a Yeti expert? Tell me all about it. <laughs> um, Let's see, Lucas says uh, something that I have heard before and I will definitely be trying this out for the first time coming up here soon. Uh, hand warmers strapped to your lens to avoid freezing and fogging. And then also bag your camera in plastic before entering a warm building and also take your memory cards out before you go inside. Uh, also, oh, and you know what? Um, somebody else commented, Saved by Grace commented to put silica packs in the bag to help um, pull together the, the condensation. Um, Alan and others said, keep your batteries next to your skin or inside pocket. Yeah, because if you don't know, cold really depletes your batteries quickly. So if you keep them you know, closer to you, they're gonna stay warmer and stay full for longer and just have a better life. Um, also, People have said, and, and I say, bring lots of them, bring lots of batteries. The Tog Dad says, circular polarizer filter is a must for cutting down glare off the snow. Good tip. And TR Coster said, shoot inside where it's warm. I think you're missing the point, TR Coster. <laughs> um, and then Land Shark Namaste said, talking about hiking, um, don't forget to hydrate. That is a really important tip because even when you're outside and it's cold, you might still be sweating, especially under all those layers and you need to hydrate anyway, even if you're not sweating a whole lot. So definitely a, a really good tip to think about something that's a little bit counterintuitive. Greg from whatever social media said flask of Tuaka. <laughs> which is hilarious because I think if I did bring alcohol out there or drink anything like that before or after, I would just be asleep. <laughs> so I don't think that would be very conducive to my creativity. <laughs> but he also said, for film folks like me, use a camera system which supports multiple backs so you do not have to load film while your monoprod is freezing. Good idea. Um, and then I actually got an entire email from someone, um, from Bill who went to Yellowstone in January. So he experienced the super duper coldness. Uh, so he said that the, the snow coach that they drive you around on within the park is heated, which is great so that you can, you know, warm up in between going out to take photos. But, 
Um, he said that the coach is not like the easiest thing to get in and out of. He said there's some maneuvering to get in and out and you also have to hold all of your stuff in your lap. So he said, think about that. Think about using a small backpack, but also with layering with your clothes, try to go thin rather than super puffy, which that's great advice because if you're stacked into this snow coach with a whole bunch of people and you're getting in and out, you don't want to be like the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man, you know? And also, also kind of along with that is bringing minimal gear because he said it's hard to change lenses in blowing snow. Yeah. Um, and, but he said it's also too bouncy to do it in between stops. That's not something that I would know because I haven't been on one of these snow coaches yet. So we'll see how I end up, how I end up doing, but, um, he ended up only bringing a couple of lenses when he went out and about so that he could just change between the two every once in a while and, you know, not have to be carrying around a lot of stuff related. He also said that there was blowing snow the whole time and he had a bad time keeping snow off the lens when he was outside. So he suggests keeping some lens wipers in an outside pocket. So it's easy to get to, um, he also said that next time he'll bring Ziploc bags and keep it over the lens until he's ready to shoot. I actually do something similar. I don't use a Ziploc bag, but I usually bring like a long scarf that will hang around me that can cover my camera so that snow or, or even light rain kind of, it protects the, the lens from that. The last thing is a technical thing. He said he had a bad time with white balance because everything's white, right? Like what's, what's like the, within those shades of white, what is the correct white? So he suggests shooting in raw. Definitely a good tip. Um, now for my tips, I have a bunch of tips here that I'm just going to go through really quickly. A lot of my stuff was the same, like layers, but I layer kind of everything. I even layer my socks. I layer my gloves for socks. I like to wear a thin pair of like my running socks so that they're sweat wicking. And then I put a heavier pair of socks over that. So not only is it an extra layer of warmth, but it's also, um, you know, it wicks the sweat. It just keeps my feet more comfortable. Um, I, oh, and I do have a, a couple of pairs of gloves that I use. I have a pair of gloves that are, you know, full gloves and they have the touch finger, but then I have a pair of fingerless gloves with the little mitten cover that flops over. So I will either wear both of those or I will just wear the fingerless ones with the mitten flopping over. It just kind of depends on the weather situation because the, the gloves that I have with fingers are thin enough that I can operate my camera, but it isn't as comfortable as just, you know, bare fingers. So when I can get away with it, I use the, the mitten gloves. Um, and then another thing I wanted to talk about is good shoes, because that's something that's kind of, I think kind of easily overlooked because, you know, you just, you're just going to wear, you know, whatever shoes you have, but I, found a pair of waterproof hiking boots that aren't too bulky. So getting in and out of the snow coach or snowshoeing or doing whatever it is that I'm going to be doing, my feet will stay warm and dry and I'll be pretty maneuverable as well. Um, you know, so often I see people in their brand new hiking boots and they're clomping around and it's like, they're practically tripping over them. Trying to find something that is super comfortable is, just as important to me as something that's going to be warm. Um, so something else I do that I actually got laughed at, uh, this past weekend for <laughs> is practice being cold. <laughs> I went to a family dinner and I didn't wear a jacket. I'm in Phoenix, Arizona right now, so it's not that cold, but I just had on a short sleeve shirt and we were standing outside talking and my family was like, are you okay? Aren't you cold? Do you want to borrow my jacket? And I was like, one, I'm not that bad because I spend a lot of time in the cold, but also I need to practice being cold. <laughs> I need to build up my tolerance. <laughs> so that's something that I do. I practice being cold and I practice with my gear in the cold. So I know how my gear is going to react, but I also know how I'm going to react. So are, you know, are my fingers going to work? Do I need to use different gloves? Do these gloves work with using my camera? Stuff like that. Um, and then, you know, kind of the safety stuff, 
know where you're going, have a phone with you, hopefully that works, you know, wherever you are, um, maps, GPS, stuff like that if you're really going out there. And also sunglasses and sunscreen, you know, keep yourself comfortable and not sunburned because the snow can be killer at reflecting the sun. And the last tip I have is things that will work for multiple purposes. This kind of goes for not only being out in the cold, but also for traveling. So in this case, I'm traveling to the cold. So I don't want to bring suitcases and suitcases full of stuff. I want things that will work for multiple purposes for me. So for example, um, that scarf that it's going to keep my neck warm, but it's also covering up my camera for me or, um, a hat my, maybe could do the same thing or you know the beanie that also kind of warms up my hands sometimes it just you know stuff that i can use for multiple purposes so that's it everybody thank you all for your tips if any of you out there have any other tips for us let us know down in the comments below and that's it everybody thanks for watching